this was a really fun cake to make. The templates for the fondant ballet shoes I got from Cakes by Linz, and the link is in the description, so check out her page. Super cute, great tutorial on making fondant ballet slippers. Make sure to flip your template over so that you have both right and left shoes, not two rights or two lefts. What I did here was I used my little tool and made indents to make it look like the leather was gathered. Just do little pinches. I'm sorry the video is a little bit blurry. Here's my leather colored fondant. And right now I'm cutting out the bottom of the slippers. Make sure to flip it over. I always use water to make my fondant stick to each other. I don't use edible glue because it just seems unnecessary when water is perfectly free and easy to get. Here I'm making my stitching with my little tool. These are really easy to get. Any sewing department has them. I'm sorry the video is a little bit fuzzy, but the stitching really makes it look so much more realistic. Here I'm using edible gold powder with my imitation vanilla. It's clear imitation vanilla, just so you know. I poured it into a spoon just to make it easier to pour tiny amounts. But I love, love, love my edible gold. Here, instead of painting on the shoe size and the company name, I decided to paint on my daughter's age that she's turning and her name. I loved personalizing these cute ballet slippers just for her. water to make it sticky we're gonna put the sides of these slippers on here are the tops of the shoes just cut them out there's no right or left they're the same so just cut out two of them I'm using my exacto knife please be careful not to cut your table they are very sharp I'm just pressing the bottoms in into the shoe and I use my paintbrush not because it's wet but it makes a nice soft rounded edge I didn't want a super sharp edge on the bottom of the shoe I wanted it to be nice and round and look more natural looking and it did the trick homemade drying stand. It kind of looks uh, a little creative. I just needed something that would hold the shoes while they dried that would give them a little bit of a curve on the sole because I wanted it to look more natural looking than just a perfectly flat shoe. On this shoe, I did a little experimenting. I put a little glob of fondant inside the toe before I put the top of the shoe on. I did that to help give the shoe a little uh, poof at the bottom, but I also did it to give my wire something more sturdy to hang on to when I pressed it through so that I could stand it upright on the cake. It turns out it worked really, really well, and even though both shoes worked perfectly, I did like that I added the extra fondant on there, so I do advise you add the extra fondant in the toe just for some more stability, especially if you're going to put it upright. Here I rolled out a bunch of really thin fondant and applied more water around the edge, and I am just going to put this around the edge to make it look a little bit more finished. Here I'm using the same fondant, except this I rolled a little bit thinner, and I'm making cute little bows. If 
if you didn't catch it that time, here's another go. So you can see it again, because I made one bow for each shoe. More water, of course. I stuck my pretty little bows up there, just like a real ballet slipper. Now let these dry at least three days and uh, turn them over just so the bottom gets some dryness too. Here I'm going to make the cute little stamens for my flower. I took some floral wire, some thin floral wire. I bent it over twice at the top and now I am wrapping the tip in a little bit of marshmallow fondant. And clip and do it again and again. Make as many stamens as you like. I let these dry about a day before I painted them my beautiful gold. Once I had them painted, I stuck them in my block of styrofoam and let them dry until I was ready to make my rose. I am ready to make my beautiful fondant rose. I'm using my teardrop cookie cutters or fondant cutters and then I'm using my little tool to uh, thin out the edges and make it all curly. I start with the smallest size and then work my way out as I work my way out on the flower. I keep the remaining fondant covered in some saran wrap just to keep it from drying out when I need it to lay out for longer periods of time. I gather up my stamens and then I start to wrap them each in the petals. I of course used a little dab of water to get the petals to stick really nicely to each other. And you just wanna keep going around and around and around. Once it's time to set them down to make more petals, I suggest you wrap the wire around something and hang it. I love making them and hanging them in big mugs like this. Once you have a decent sized rose, then go ahead and let it dry for about a day. Uh, and then you can continue on to make more and more petals like I did. Once it becomes too heavy to hang, then just go ahead and set it in a mug or something with some paper towels in between each of the petals to help keep them separated. And then let it dry for at least a day, I would say. Here I'm making my fondant crown. I love it because it's patterned after Sleeping Beauty. I love her crown so much. I went ahead and just found a template that I kind of liked online or just looked at Aurora and I drew it out and then I cut it out with some paper and my fondant cutter. I laid it on some parchment paper and found the right width of something to lay it around. Make sure that it is flush against the bottom because it does need to stand up at least at some point because I do need to wrap this crown all the way around the salt canister so I needed to set it upright during its dry time. I went ahead and started painting some gold on some pearls and then once the crown was pretty dry after uh, I think it was a couple days I started to paint it with my gold paint. Sorry for the overexposure and you can't really see it very well. All right it's almost party day so it's time to put the cake all together. I interchanged between 
vanilla buttercream and raspberry pie filling for the bottom tier. And then on the second tier, I did chocolate ganache and chocolate cake, which is my favorite. sure your cake is chilled through the middle before you throw that fondant on otherwise it's just gonna squish all that buttercream is gonna squish out the sides and it's gonna be a mess you want it to be pretty firm and to not roll around or tip over on you you can get any air bubbles out of the top or the sides with a little pin Make sure to poke a hole through the top because you need a place for the air to escape. Otherwise your cake is going to fill with big air bubbles, air bulges in the fondant and you don't want that. Oh, look at that amazing ganache, yes. Go ahead and chill it so it's nice and firm. And then I covered it with some white buttercream so that the chocolate did not show through such a light colored fondant. Time to put it on the cake stand, one of my favorite parts. There's that ear hole, don't forget it. So here I'm using wooden dowels and I am actually measuring the height of the cake. So here I'm gonna measure where I need to cut it. I'm gonna pull it back out again and snip. This is going to support the second tier. So if you saw that chocolate ganache cake, I actually have some cardboard underneath it to support it. So here's our five dowels in the cake plus one tall one in the center. And I made a hole through the center of that cardboard in the top tier. That way that tall dowel could go straight through it and give it more stability. It's time for edible images, yay! I painted the cake with some more water to make it sticky. I pulled out my images from the plastic wrap and I trimmed off the excess white since I didn't want that on there. And this was a bit of a challenge. It does help to kind of rub it against the edge of your table and it really, really helps when you stick it in the freezer for a minute or so and then pull it out and try to remove it immediately after the freezer, that was really, really helpful. It's especially hard when you're trying to do big eight by tens like I'm doing right now. Usually the images I work with are much smaller, but somehow we made it work and most of it was especially helpful when I actually cut it into three pieces instead of trying to pull off an entire eight by 10. And luckily, since I was doing sheet music, that was very um, merciful in letting me do that because you can't normally just cut up your edible images into pieces, but this actually worked out really well and it looked like old paper. Then I wrapped it up in some pretty ribbon glued it with some melted candy wafer, and then painted on the front with some more water. I'm excited, this is the ballerina oil painting that I absolutely love. I went ahead and stuck it on the front there where I wanted it. Make sure to press from the inside out so you don't have any more air bubbles. I took my X-Acto knife and cut away the excess edible image. used more melted candy wafers to stick on my beautiful flower. Then I took more water, painted around the edge of the frame, and I stuck on my beautiful golden pearls. I 
I absolutely loved this fondant frame that I made. I used a, a tutorial from Avalon Cakes and the link is in the description. I highly recommend it. It looks really challenging, but it was actually really doable and quite easy. It looks gorgeous. And what I love about it is you can custom make it and make it as big or any shape that you need to so you don't need to purchase any kind of molds whatsoever. I used my edible gold to do the final touches and make it look absolutely gorgeous. I put the same gold on the edges of all the black petals because I didn't want my black rose to fade into this black blob in photographs. I wanted it to stand out. So because I put on that gold, you can see all the individual petals much easier. To hold on the crown, I used more melted candy wafer and I went ahead and stuck my wire into my shoes and stuck it on the cake. Usually you do this step on location, but I decided to risk it and do it at home because I always wanna see how it turns out and take pictures. And luckily it worked out really, really well. I painted on some more water to hold on those pretty little ribbons. The ribbons were also really nice because anytime there was a seam in my edible image, it was easier to hide it and make it less noticeable. The ballerina cake is done, yay! It is party day. I got everything done last night except the ribbons, which I finished this morning, and it turned out great. I love the way the edible images turned out. I have just made a video on how to apply edible images, so please check that out. It is so much fun and so easy. I did have some trouble with the 8x10 because the cake decorator at our grocery store said they just got in a pretty bad batch of the sheets of edible images, the sheets that they print out on, and that they were extra thin and even she was having a terrible time not sticking her finger through it, not making rips and tears. So I did have a bit of a challenge on that, but I did get the front pieces off really well. Tip the freezer, it's a lifesaver. But don't worry because usually edible images are much easier to work with. Uh, and my ballerina turned out beautiful. So the beautiful ornate frame came from a tutorial by Avalon Cakes. So check it out, it's in a link below. They did a great job. I put a, a few adaptations on it. I put around my gold pearls on the inside and then I changed a couple of the shapes but for the most part it's the same one that she did and it's fantastic so check out her tutorial i've loved it and i really really love that i can now make a custom frame any shape any size anytime anywhere and i don't have to pay for a different size silicone mold every time I want to do a different image. We are going to carry this to the birthday location and cakes are pretty heavy and we're going to see how we're going to transport this. Transporting cakes down the road is always such an ordeal, <laughs> but we're going to get there. So I will see you at the party. Mm -hmm.